If you want me to stay in the AHFO, vote thumbs up. If you want me to be fired, vote thumbs down. Oh, from behind comes Andrade. Man, Hardy just got voted out, guys. Wait a minute! Jeffrey Nero Hardy is here tonight! Takes out the blade, and here's the butcher! Oh, the butcher! Boom! The swanton bomb from Jeff Hardy! The brothers have re reunited! Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that sometimes you shouldn't fix what isn't broken! What an episode of Dynamite. This week we saw a new TNT champion crowned. We saw not one but two members of the Pinnacle are now out of the group. We saw William Regal declare that you'll need to step up or else get stepped on. We saw Jericho form a new heel stable. And then we saw another major name jump ship from one company to the other. You know, it feels like AEW majors in worst kept secrets. We all knew when CM Punk and Brian Danielson were coming. Every major announcement TK would ever make would be spoiled days in advance, with the exception of the Ring of Honor purchase. And that's only because ROH wasn't officially bought until two hours before the show. But tonight, to the surprise of absolutely nobody, Jeff Hardy made his debut in All Elite Wrestling two years after brother Matt had done the same. Coming out to reunite with his brother, who had just been forcefully removed from the Andrade Hardy family office because, well, let's face it, they suck. I mean, the AHFO had a worse win-loss record than the Dark Order, but I digress. Jeff got a fantastic pop all the same, partly because the music he came out to was the Hardy Boys' actual WWF and WWE theme, a song by Zack Tempest that's not actually WWE property. I am going to try my best to ignore the fact that while Matt, his brother that he's known all his life, was getting beaten down, Jeff not only waited for his music to hit, but decided to dance for a couple seconds instead of, you know, making the save. I expect too much realism from my wrestling, obviously. But in case you've forgotten, only three months ago Jeff Hardy was a WWE regular, seemingly in line for a push when he sorta just stopped. No, seriously, Hardy was working a house show in a six-man tag alongside Drew McIntyre and King Xavier Woods against the Bloodline, and he just rolled out of the ring and stopped. He left through the crowd, he took some photos, and he was never seen again. Based on his history of alcohol and drug abuse, WWE immediately demanded he take a drug test and go into rehab. As per policy, if a superstar refuses rehab, they're done, gone, fired. That's actually the reason Hardy had been released from the WWE back in 2003, and then again in 2009. Though when a similar thing happened during a TNA pay-per-view, the joke was on him, cause TNA doesn't fire people for that. Anyway, Hardy's drug test would come back clean, but he was already out of his contract, so I can't help but find that absolutely hilarious and brilliant. Jeff Hardy has always very much been the modern version of a Scott Hall or a Jake Roberts. All the potential in the world to be a top guy forever, but his demons constantly bringing him back down wherever he'd go. It's a shame, because the guy who actually fits the charismatic Enigma nickname is a needle mover. He actually could make people buy NWA TNA pay-per-views. And his time on top of Impact as the heel champion? Those were actually their highest rated shows. It was always a matter of just staying clean and out of trouble. If he can do that, he'll do rather well in AEW. He's an established veteran with a gigantic history of success and unwavering fan support. Not for me, I think that Jeff Hardy looks like he smells like a comic book shop, and I don't mean paper and ink. But he is bigger, physically, than a lot of performers on that roster, and probably the best bridge they've got between those SoCal Pro indie spot fest types and the traditional storytellers. For now, we can expect Matt and Jeff to bring some major attention to their tag team division, which already often boasts the best matches on each show. Seriously, I'm still thinking about that cage match from All Out, and I'm not even a Bucks fan. Oh damn, I forgot. We're actually gonna get the Hardy Boys versus the Hardly Boys. 
Finally, after all these years. I think the only time those two squared off was in Ring of Honor on the same day the Hardys signed new deals with WWE. So we have that to look forward to. I guess that leaves one important question. Now that Jeff is all elite, when does Shannon Moore get hired? Seriously, with all that said and done, what do you think of Jeff Hardy joining All Elite Wrestling? I mean, there's no way this was a surprise, because once Matt joined in 2020, we knew Jeff was going to eventually follow, but... Do you want to see Jeff Hardy alongside his brother working the tag division and giving the rub to younger talents? Or do you want to see Jeff get a chance as a solo, being the ambassador of the brand, maybe even a run with the world title? Let me know what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more, because I want you to be a part of this conversation too. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.